Hi guys, this is Michael from Team Canon, and in this video I'm going to show you how to work with the cost page builder. Now at this point I'm going to assume that you've already installed cost and that you set up a blog and added some basic posts to your site. If you haven't done this yet, feel free to watch our other tutorial videos on these specific topics. Alright, so let's have a look at our site so far. We're currently looking at our blog page called My Blog, and as you can see, we have added some basic posts to populate our blog role. However, if we go to our home page slash front page, you will see that this is also set up as a blog. Now you might be wondering why your front page is a blog right after you installed the theme. And to answer this question, let's have a look at one of the WordPress settings. So go to Dashboard, Settings, and Reading. Here you'll see a setting called Front Page Displays. And as you can see, this is by default set to your latest posts, or in other words, your blog. Now our goal in this tutorial video will be to create our own front page and to tell WordPress to use this so-called static page as our front page instead of the default blog. So let's start off by actually making a page called My Home Page. Go to Pages, Add New, and put in your title. Next, we select what kind of page this is going to be. If you open up the template select, you'll see the available page templates. In this tutorial, we'll be creating our home page using the cost page builder. So go ahead and select the page builder template. When you select the page builder template, you will notice that the cost page settings change and you will now be prompted to select which page builder template to attach to this page. Since we don't actually have any page builder templates, let's just leave it at no template and publish. Now return to settings, reading, and let's tell WordPress to use our new page as front page. Set front page displays to a static page and select our newly created my home page. Save changes and return to the front end. Refresh the home page and you will now see that the home page blog is gone and instead our site is displaying an empty page builder page. Now the message on the screen tells us that this page is in fact a page builder page but that no page builder template has been attached yet. So let's return to the back end and let's go to the page builder to create our first page builder template. The page builder is divided into three sections. To the left you have all the available page builder blocks, in the middle you have your template canvas, and to the right you have the template controls. If you do not yet have any page builder templates, you can simply go ahead and give the default template a name. And save changes. Now we can begin to add content to our new page builder template. To begin, let's just add something really simple, just to test that we are actually getting output. So just to demonstrate, I'm going to add a sitemap. To add content, you simply drag and drop a block from the block section and onto the template canvas. When you drop a new block onto the canvas, it will automatically open up and reveal additional settings. Now the sitemap is quite simple as it only requires a title. Notice that most blocks will have default content to provide an example of what to input. Let's try and change the title to something else. And now remember to save changes. The next thing we need to do is actually attach this page builder template to our home page. So we go to pages my home page and in the cost page settings box we open up the page builder template select and select the page builder template that we've just created and update we now go back to the home page and refresh 
Our page builder template now displays a simple sitemap along with our custom title. So now at this point we've created a page builder template. We have attached that template to a page and we've told WordPress to use this page as the new front page. Next let's go ahead and try to recreate the home page that we have featured on our preview site. I'll just open that up so we have a reference. As you can see, our preview homepage has a slider at the top, then content in columns, a featured video, featured posts, and finally we have a supporters section. Alright, so first thing we need to do is add a slider. Come back to our page builder, find the revolution slider block and drag it onto the canvas. At this point, notice that the blocks on your canvas can be opened or closed, and you can rearrange them simply by dragging and dropping. You can remove blocks by dragging them to the trash bin zone, and release. Alright, so let's have a look at the Revolution Slider block settings. As you can see, the block requires you to put in the alias of the slider that you wish to display. Let's save changes and go to the Revolution Slider plugin. Here you can see that we have not yet created any sliders. You can now either go ahead and create a slider or you can import one. To stay on topic, we are going to do an import and save how to create a new Revolution Slider for another tutorial video. So click the Import Slider button. Navigate to the cost bundle that you downloaded from ThemeForest. Find the folder named Content and select the slider HTML file. Click Import Slider. We now have a slider with the alias homepage. So let's go back to our page builder. And let's just check that this is the alias that we have set our revolution slider block up to use. Let's return to the front end and refresh. So that takes care of the slider. Now let's go to our preview site to see what we need to add next. Next are the columns. These are actually widget areas, so let me go ahead and show you how to add those. Return to the page builder. Find the widgets block and drag it underneath the slider. Now the widgets block lets you add widget areas ordered side by side. You can select which layout to use. The default is set to third, 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 which means that you will get three columns, each taking up a third of the width. Now for our setup, we are going to use the four column setup called half, fourth, fourth. This will create three widget areas where the first will take up half of the width and the other two will each take up a fourth of the width. Now this might be a little confusing at first but just experiment with the layouts and it will soon begin to make good sense. Now the next thing we have to do is to select what widget areas to display. For this tutorial we'll use custom widget area 1, 2 and 3. A quick look at the front end will show us that we now have widget areas, but no content in those widget areas. So let's go to Appearance and Widgets. Now in the first custom widget area, we will put a simple text widget. Put in the title and some content. And save. In custom widget area 2 we are going to put the cost widget called single post. Now as the name implies this will display one single post and we'll just select which post to display. In the last widget area we want to put a sign up form for our mailing list. Now we recommend you use MailChimp for this as we've optimized cost for this particular plugin. 
However, MailChimp does take a little while to set up because you need to create an account first. So for this tutorial video, we are going to take a shortcut and simply use placeholder HTML to mimic the output of the MailChimp plugin. So again, add a text widget, this time to custom widget area 3, and put in a title and our placeholder HTML. Return to the front end and refresh. Alright, if we go to our preview site, we can see that the next element on the homepage is a featured video. So let's go to our page builder and add the featured video block. In the featured video block, you can set a background image. You can set the background image to parallax scroll, choose background color, add some text before and after the video, and of course put in a video embed code. So let's go ahead and select a background image. As before, this block also has default content to help you get up and running. But let's change the settings so they match our preview side. So we change the color, the before video text, the after video text, and finally the embeddable media code. Save changes. Go to front and refresh. All right, so next on the list is a featured post section. So let's find the featured post block and add it. Here you can put in a title. You can decide what post to feature. You can choose between latest posts, random posts, popular posts listed by views or comments, and finally posts from a certain category. Next, decide how many columns to display and how many posts to show. You can turn the different post elements on or off. Decide what images you should link to, post or light box. Decide on a button text and finally put in a button link. But for this example, we will simply use all the default settings. Save template and let's see what that gets us. Finally, let's add the supporters block. In this block, you can set a banner text. You can upload supporter images, select to repeat the images until they fill the full width of the screen, put in text and links for the two available buttons, and finally you have the option to insert custom HTML. Let's go ahead and add some supporter images. And finally, I'm going to put our share buttons in the HTML box. Now we use a provider called share this for our share buttons. And I'm simply going to copy paste the code that they have provided for us. So save and return to home page. And now we have a finished home page. For the last bit of details, let's go to cost settings, general, 
then in the header section, let's highlight the last menu item. And while we are here, we are also going to select sticky header just to display that feature. Save changes. And now let's go to appearance and select the earth skin. Save changes and return to front. Notice the change of theme colors, the highlighted menu item and the sticky header. As a final summary, let's just very quickly run through how to add a new page builder page to the main menu. First, create a new page builder template. Add some content. save, go to pages, add new, select the page builder page template, and select what page builder template to use. Publish. Go to Appearance, Menus, find your new page and add it to the menu. Save menu, go to front and refresh. And we now have our new page builder page in the menu. And that's it for this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. Thank you for watching and see you soon.